Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and what you're going to do in our lives. We thank you, Lord, and you bless your name. And everyone says, Amen and Amen. You may now take your seats. Good evening. Uh, Lord, help me. These were the words I uttered during my darkest moments. After straying from the Lord, even if I have been a Christian since my youth, God reached out and led me and my girlfriend to begin attending CCF worship services. I was already crying during the worship songs. Hearing God's word made me feel alive again. Everything seemed to come together and started making sense. And after a few weeks, we rededicated our lives to Jesus. We joined biblical foundation classes and later on attended premarital counseling in preparation for our wedding in 2007. Shortly thereafter, we joined a couple's retreat in Baguio through which God made such a big impact on our marriage. By God's grace, we were able to avoid heading toward a disastrous marriage. Pastor Peter's teaching on the biblical roles of husband and wife definitely made us persevere toward the marriage we now enjoy. We then prayed that God would give us a D-group leader to guide us and to keep us accountable. To my surprise, a handsome pastor who I haven't talked for, to for a very long time suddenly called me and asked me if I wanted to join their D-group. Of course, I said yes. This time we prayed, Lord, use us. So we constantly attended our D12 and grew in fellowship and in studying God's word together. Through the modeling, the prayers, and encouragement of Pastor Bong and our fellow D12 members, we began leading our own couples D group in the year 2013. I thought this was all I could do to serve God, but he had other plans for me. Although I was reluctant, Pastor Bong challenged me to serve in the traffic team. It's physically demanding, it's outside our air-conditioned comfort, and the afternoon shift is not convenient for me. But God used this so my husband can practice being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now every time he drives, he complains less. He doesn't wish ill will against other drivers. He doesn't drive recklessly. As an added bonus, he gained many brothers and sisters in the traffic team who overflow with thankful, thankfulness as we serve Jesus. 
We have also decided to homeschool our two children, which is always a team effort. The joy of serving the Lord is emphasized through the support, love, and respect of my wife. She always prepares the things I need, whether for the group and traffic. Her once controlling and nagging attitude was transformed into a prayerful, submissive, humble, and loving heart. I definitely agree that behind a man's success is his wife with Jesus at the center. We are Benedict and Mary Shelba Lisbis. To, to God be all the glory. glory. Thank you. Good evening. I would like to say hi to those who are watching us live today via uh, live stream or uh, internet. Greetings from your brothers and sisters in CCF East. So before I start, may we open with the word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, and praise you for sustaining us, Lord, on our fifth day prayer and fasting uh, week, O oh God. Father, we just continue, Lord, to pray that as we seek to know your will, Lord, we pray that we will all experience you, Lord, in the most intimate way. Father, we ask, O oh God, that you be with us. May your presence be felt in this uh, place, O oh God. Father, we thank you. And Lord, again, we confess our complete dependence upon you, Lord, as, I, as me and my wife will be sharing your word. May you be with us. We love you and we praise you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So today, tonight, this is our actually fifth day or fifth night of our prayer and fasting week. And uh, this, uh, this evening, our topic is about husband and wife, uh, husband and wife team. Now, whenever you hear the word husband and wife or couple, what enters your mind? What do you see or picture? Do you see a couple who is so sweet, just like the couple on your left? Or do you see or picture a couple who is so happy and satisfied, just like the couple on your right? Or do you see a couple who is so stressed, just like the couple in front of you, or you see or picture a couple who is so sawana, sukuna, surrendered, just like the couple who left. Biru lang po. Now, as I, as I was searching for uh, pictures about a husband and wife doing things together, I came across these pictures of a couple publicly performing to make a living. So the goal is, for the husband to hammer the roof tiles without breaking the neck, neck and the head of the wife, okay? And I believe he was so successful, okay, in uh, fulfilling his job. Now, if we will consider this as an effective husband and wife team, I'm pretty sure that a lot, a lot of wives, especially those who are here, would like to take the place of the husband, in hammering the roof tiles, breaking it together with the necks and the heads of the husbands, okay? So, I will never suggest this thing, okay? Now, tonight, this evening, we will talk about a couple. A couple, Aquila and Priscilla, who exemplified a godly marriage and their way and their walk and journey as followers of our Lord Jesus and learn uh, from their story or from their experiences. Now, in the book of Acts chapter 18, we can see from verse 2 that there was a Jew named Aquila together with his wife who suffered persecution in Rome, not because of being a believer, not because of being Christians, but because the emperor at that time, uh, Claudius Caesar, ex expelled or deported all the Jews from Rome. So, uh, from Rome, they migrated, they moved to Corinth. And in Corinth, they started their business as tent makers. Now, in Corinth, this is where they came to know the Apostle Paul and became friends with him. And then eventually, they invited or they generously shared their home to the Apostle Paul. And I believe this couple taught the Apostle Paul how to do tent making and eventually asked him to join in their business. So this couple, we can learn they are so generous in sharing whatever they have to the brethren, to, to the others, okay? Now, in the book of 1 Corinthians, this was the letter or epistle of the Apostle Paul when he was in Ephesus, together with Aquila and Priscilla. So, Apostle Paul, Aquila, and Priscilla, they were already in Ephesus. So, this letter says, in verse 19, can we read all together?
Okay, since Aquila and Priscilla, they were greeting the Corinthian believers, but together with the believers or the church which is, which is in the house of Aquila and Priscilla. Now, in Corinthians, they generous, generously shared their home to the Apostle Paul, and in Ephesus, they also shared their home as a place of worship for the believers. Now, in the book of Romans, chapter 16, verse 5, it says, Greet Prisa, Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus. Now, from Ephesus, they moved back to Rome. Okay? Now, here, in verse 5, it says, Also, greet the church that is in where? In their home. So, very consistent sila. In Corinthians, sharing. In Ephesus, sharing. And even back in Rome, they were also sharing. Now, in the book of Romans, verses, uh, chapter 16, verses 3 to 4, Give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila. This was the letter of the Apostle Paul to the church in Rome. Give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila, who work together with me in Christ Jesus and who risk their own lives to what? To save his life. No wonder this couple were so generous in sharing whatever blessings they have from the Lord if in fact they are willing to sacrifice their lives for, our, for their brother, the Apostle Paul. So we can learn that this couple, okay, Aquila and Priscilla, they prioritize others more than selves. You know, sharing your home, being generous to anyone is not that easy. For a couple of times, a couple of occasions, we invited, we, we asked people to live with us, ex-convicts, addicts, uh, juvenile delinquents, and other people. It's not that easy. It's difficult at times, it's draining, and it's very costly. But this couple, they prioritize others more than themselves. And we call them, or in other words, we call it selfishness or selflessness. Now, our master... The Lord Jesus modeled to us humility, modeled to us servanthood, and He Himself modeled to us how it is to be selfless. He sacrificed a lot, even His life for all of us. Now, the Master, our Lord Jesus, He expects all of us to do the same thing, to be selfless. In fact, in the book of Matthew, can we read all together, go... Okay, very clearly. He said, Jesus said to his disciples, if any, one, and if any of you wants to be my disciples, the question is, are we followers of our Lord Jesus? Are we? So can you ask your, your, uh, the person beside you, are you a follower of Christ? If we claim that we are indeed followers of Christ, the command is, you must, it's not a choice, you must turn from what? Selfish ways. Stop being selfish and take up your own cross, meaning be willing to sacrifice for the sake of, of, of our Lord Jesus and then follow Jesus. Claro po ba yan? So can we make a commitment as a couple, as a family tonight? So we'll tell each other. You tell your loved ones. You tell your spouse. You tell your children. You tell your parents. Sabihin niyo po sa kanila. From now on, sabihin niyo po. I will no longer be selfish. I will carry you and follow Jesus because you are my cross. <laughs> now, for us uh, to hear more about the story of Aquila and Priscilla, I would like to call on my Priscilla, my wife Dawn. Good evening. You know, before I begin, I'd like to see a show of hands of those who came here tonight as a husband and wife. Wow, there are a lot. So, you know, my prayer is that you will be the future Aquilas and Priscilas of CCF. Would you like that, Pastor Peter? Yes. <laughs> okay, you know, if there's one thing that I admired about um, Aquila and Priscilla, it is their um, being together. They are always united in doing things together in so many ways. For one, they were one in marriage, maybe because they were husband and wife. They were one in the Lord because they share the same faith. They were one in their decisions because they were always doing things together. They were one in serving because they do ministry together. And they are one in occupation because they were both tent makers. Can I ask you something, especially the wives? Do you think 
Is it easy? Do you think it's easy to be a Priscilla to your husbands? I submit to you, it is very difficult. But you know what? You can learn how to be one through your love for Jesus. It is your love for God that will overflow and will manifest and will compel you towards serving God and supporting your husband. You know, in my case, God dealt with me in that area, not overnight, but over a period of time. And before I share with you how the Lord did that in my life, I want to refresh your memories that two years ago, I shared with you during the start of the prayer fasting week uh, way back in St. Francis in one Sunday service. I shared about my testimony, how the Lord changed my husband and restored our marriage. We were separated for three years. He was into adultery for 10 years. He was into drug use for 15 years. He was in and out of jail for several cases. And you know, that left me a very miserable life and wife. Isn't it hard? Yes. So I couldn't do anything, I couldn't stop my husband, and all I did was just to pray for him and to fast for him. Yes, he is a product of a prayer and fasting, but it was the Lord who did... <laughs> Thank you. But you know, it was the Lord who did an amazing work in his life, where in one dawn watch that he attended with me for the first time, he started to pray, he surrendered his life to God, he confessed all his long list of sins. And, you know, um, can I tell you what? The Lord did such a big miracle in his life and in our marriage. It was restored because of the Lord's work. And, you know, it's been 15 beautiful, wonderful, fruitful years of serving alongside with my husband. So, how did we start? Well, after being simply D group members, we became D group leaders. We handled a mixed group until it became a couples D group, until my husband developed a burden to do a Bible study with the jail inmates because he used to be a prisoner himself. And so somebody led him to do and start the Biahe jail ministry. So we um, had a Bible study first at the Marikina City Jail. You know, when we started, there were about three to 400 male and female at, um, inmates who attended each week. And together with my husband, there were a lot of speakers who would come and we would invite each week. But you know, one thing happened, um, the jail warden suddenly decided to transfer the female inmates to the next floor. The male inmates stay at the fifth floor. The female inmates stay at, um, were transferred to the sixth floor. And so the jail warden said, you have to do the Bible study separately. And so that leaves me no choice but to do the Bible studies for the female inmates. You know, when we started the, the Bible studies in Marikina Jail, I didn't share the same burden as that of my husband's. And it was when I started to give the devotions it led me towards, you know, learning how to build relationships with the female inmates. And so I spent more time with them. We would talk more. And um, then I learned how to, you know, love the unlovable. That ministry was not the end of my husband's many burdens in his life. After the Biahe Jail ministry, there came the Dumaga tribe missions. Somebody from our D group um, invited my husband to help the Dumaga tribe up in the mountains of Sierra Madre in Antipolo. My, my husband loved hiking, and so after his first climb, he kept coming back. He went there two to three times a year. You know, um, and after each climb, and I would ask him, so what would happen? So, you know, there is just a different high every time he would tell me stories about what happened in the Dumagat mission trip. He would never invite me because he knew that was something I did not like. You know why? Because that mission trip, my husband would sleep in tents. Tent. He would stay up in the mountains for three to four days. Up in the mountains, there is no electricity, there is no toilet, you take a bath in the river, and you know, I am sure my husband knew that it was very inconvenient for me. So he never attended, attempted to invite me. 
But you know what? Every time he would tell me stories of what happened to his mission trip, it gave me that sense of, you know, very, I felt so very uncomfortable. And then I said, Lord, I think something is wrong here. And then the Lord made me realize that you are not supportive of your husband. And so, you know, after I prayed to God, I surprised my husband by saying, while he was planning his next mission trip, I told him, Sasama ako sayo. Sama ako. After I said those magical words, my husband, my husband's face suddenly lit up. He was so excited that after several years of going there on his own with his team, now I'm going to be coming up with him in this mission trip. And you know what? Come that fateful morning when I was now with my husband, I started to hike. And that hike, when we were already in the middle of the mountains in Sierra Madre, I never realized it was that steep. It was that slopey. And God was really funny because He made it very, very difficult for me. You know what happened? It started to rain. So that made us all wet. The path that we had to take became so muddy. The mud was unto my knees. And we had to walk very slowly because it was so slippery. And what was the usual four-hour hike turned out to be six hours. So I said, Lord, I want to go back home. I cannot do this anymore. I really wanted to cry. But you know what? The Lord reminded me, in your marriage, remember, you never gave up. This is just a simple hike. So I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to go back there. I'm going to go up. And to make the long story short, I made it up to the mountains. And you know what? When I got up there, right before my very eyes, I saw more than 30 families of the Dumaga tribes. It really broke my heart to see that there are just so many people up in the mountains with no food to eat, only the plants that they um, um, get from the, around their, their, the mountains. And I saw my husband. He was so happy to spend time with all these Dumagat people. And then I prayed to God, Lord, so this is what I have been actually missing all these years. This is what my husband has been enjoying, and I was not there to support him. And so after that first mission trip that I had, I joined my husband in his succeeding mission trips. And I challenged myself to do, you know, to do something different for the ladies of the Dumagat missions. You know what I did? I thought something like what Jesus did to wash the disciples' feet. But it was not only that. You know, I brought with me my manicure set, and I cleaned the feet of the ladies of the Domagats. You know, they walk a lot, barefoot usually. They would plant a lot. They would do kaingin a lot. So you can just imagine how dirty their feet and their hands were. But, you know, when I did that, and I do that each climb, and it just gives me such different joy, especially the husbands, because they saw that the wives had a total makeover. <laughs> I learned a lot from those mission trips, but not, still, my husband's burden did not end there. There was the youth ministry, the jail ministry, the Dumagat missions, and now, um, after that, he had another burden, this time with the street children with those who are sniffing rugby and vulcacil. Some of them were sexually molested. Some are abandoned and orphaned. You know, we have uh, different kids who we learn how to minister to them. We share the gospel to them. We put them in a shelter. Some are brought to schools. And, you know, um, today we have seen most of them with lives changed, lives transformed, and most of them are serving the Lord in the different CCF East churches. These are some of the pictures that we do in the Dumagat missions there. And that is what I did 
with the feet <laughs> of the ladies of the Dumagats. You know, um, if there's one thing that I now enjoy doing with my husband, it is church planting. I discovered that this is what I love doing the most, you know, to be with the people. Can I tell you a secret? You know what? I am actually someone who is an introvert. But when the Lord changed my husband, he also changed me. And when my husband had the compassion for the lost and the needy, that's also when I learned how to develop the same compassion. So what are the benefits of, you know, doing a husband and wife ministry together? There is godly modeling to children, your disciples in the church. There is intimacy with God and with each other. There is fruitfulness. You know what? Um, majority of the youth that we ministered to in the beginning, they are now, some of them are campus missionaries, and one is now a pastor of CCF Tai Tai. And the jail continues to conduct Bible studies to this very day. Aside from the Marikina jail, we also have the Pasig jail, the Rizal Provincial jail, and some of them are doing the Bureau of Corrections as well. Most importantly, you know, my husband and I are thankful that we are called to serve. And I am most thankful right now because my husband is no longer a womanizer. In fact, he loves God more than, <laughs> more than, more than anyone or anything else, or God. And um, thank you for um, allowing us to share what the Lord has done in our marriage. Good night, everyone, and to God be the glory. Ginanaan si Priscilla. Ginanaan si Priscilla. Dati three sila, ngayon one na lang. Dati Priscilla. So we learned that Aquilas and Priscilla's, they prioritize others more than themselves. Second, that, is that they're always united in doing things together. The third thing that we can learn from this couple is that they were so intentional in sharing the gospel. Now, with the one and a half years that the Apostle Paul stayed with Aquila and Priscilla, the Apostle Paul was able to share so many things about the Word of God to this couple. They were equipped, they were empowered, and having the same faith, having the same passion, they opened their homes so that others may come to know Jesus as well. So from Corinth, and if, uh, from Corinth they moved to Ephesus. Uh, when the Apostle Paul left, came another Jew whose name is Apollos. The Apollos, Apollos was an eloquent speaker or a, a very good preacher. However, he preaches only the baptism of John. So when this couple, Aquila and Priscilla, heard Apollos, they did not rebuke or correct him publicly. Instead, they brought him home, patiently, lovingly, and accurately shared to Apollos all the things that they have learned from Apostle Paul. So they were faithful in studying God's Word, faithful in sharing God's Word, and this couple moving from one place to the other is not after making money. You know why? Making money is not their priority, but to make Christ known to the community is. Can we be like Aquila and Priscilla, having that burden of prioritizing and making Christ known to our community? And last, they, they were always ready to leave their comfort zone. So from Rome to Corinth, and after one and a half years, the Apostle Paul challenged them to move to Ephesus. You know, they could have turned him down. They could have said no to, the, to Apostle Paul, but because of their love and obedience to God and their uh, obedience to their mentor, from Corinth, they moved to Ephesus. And from Ephesus, they moved back to Rome to continue the work of the Lord. You know, Christianity, being a follower of Christ, is not about convenience and comfort. It is all about fulfilling the purposes of God, of, of purposes of God, of God's uh, plan for each one of us. What's God's will for all of us? And whenever I do missions, okay, to the streets, I would constantly remind those who will join me to minister to the street children or minister to the Dumagas of Sierra Madre or other places as well. I would constantly remind those who are joining me in this mission trip that mission and ministry is not about us. Whenever we are out there, I would constantly remind them not to look for comfort, but always look for an opportunity to share about Jesus. So, this couple, Aquila and Priscilla, 
they were a husband and wife team. They, were, they prioritized others more than themselves. They, they are always united in doing things together. They were so intentional in sharing the gospel. And last, they were always ready to leave their comfort zone because they are a pair. Good night, and God bless you all.